Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Air Force. Our story today is entitled Second Fiddle. This is the story of a man who found out the hard way that if you want your team to win, you have to play the position for which you're best suited. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Opportunity is a word that has been used in proclamations, campaigns, and slogans since the dawn of American independence. There's no hollow sound to its usage either, for this land of ours is truly blessed with more opportunities for success than any nation on earth. Today, your Air Force is offering ambitious young men greater opportunities for success than ever before. As an airman, you'll receive free specialized training in one of the hundreds of Air Force assignments. There are careers to suit every interest, such as communications, radar, air traffic control, and many, many others. As an airman, you'll wear the handsome blue Air Force uniform. You'll serve in fascinating assignments at home and abroad, and you'll be a member of a wonderful organization that has won the respect and admiration of people everywhere. Yes, your United States Air Force is comprised of outstanding young men who are going places in highly specialized, good-paying careers. Find out soon about your visit your local United States Air Force recruiting station at your earliest opportunity. And now your United States Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, Second Fiddle. Tonight, it's the senior prom at Centerville High. It's one of those nights that a youngster will remember for a long, long time. After all, graduation from high school means the end of an era. As the guest speaker at the commencement exercises said, tomorrow, you young people will face the world with adult responsibility. Well, this responsibility is nothing new to Eddie Benson. He's a good year or two older than most of the other fellows who graduated yesterday, and he's been facing adult responsibility for a long time. But let's not talk about that now. This is prom night, and a night to have some fun. Say, let's get some air, huh? We might just as well. They're playing a rumba, and that's one dance you just won't learn. I've never had time. It's nice out here, isn't it? Yeah. Eddie, have you thought about... Well, thought about what? Well, everything. I mean, Dad wants to give you a job in the store. You could learn a lot, you know, how to fix radios and TV sets and all kinds of appliances. Yeah, I guess so. Mother says we're still a bit too young. Yeah, my mother says so, too. They forget they were both married at 17. It's a jet. It must be the newest night fighter. I wonder where he's going. It could work out, Eddie. We could both save for a year, maybe two, and you'd have a good job. I'd love to be sitting at the controls of that baby upstairs. A oh, lucky guy. Really, Edward Benson? When a person is talking about serious things... Okay. I spoke to your father tonight while I was waiting for you. Oh, you didn't tell me. What did he say? What'd you say? Well, I said... I didn't think I could take the job. Oh, Eddie. Margaret, working in a store is okay for some people, but how could I stay in a store eight, ten hours a day? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. May I tell you about our easy budget payment plan? Now, in this refrigerator, you'll find the finest workmanship and a one-year guarantee. Oh, Margaret, how can I do that? Oh, Eddie, people grow up. They want to get married, have a family. 
You have to work. Don't tell me about working. I had to work since I was eight years old. I sold papers, I mowed lawns, I, I jerked sodas. I know all about work. If I didn't work, Mom would be in a spot for the rent. Oh, Eddie, you just can't do odd jobs for the rest of your life. Gee, if you could afford to go to college and maybe learn to be a doctor or a lawyer. Oh, is that it, Eddie? I'll wait. I'll help. We can both work. I want to fly. But I won't wait while you hang around the airport and sneak rides and fool around with engines and run errands for the pilot. But I know how I can be a flyer. You know who steered me straight to it? No, and I don't care. Your father. My father? But he wants you to come into the store. And then maybe one day it'll belong to both of us. You know, I never understood your old man. Not until tonight. I thought he was a stubborn kind of guy who wanted everything his own way. It's funny, isn't it, how we never sat down and just talked? Now, he's all right, your old man. He wants me to fly. But I just don't believe it. He has too much common sense. Yeah, enough sense to know that a guy has to do the thing he wants before it's too late. Eddie, he said, if you're not kidding, if you really want it, go do it. Don't just dream about it, but make it come true. Do it the best way, the most practical way. Papa said that? You bet. Now, where would I ever get the money to learn how to fly and qualify for a pilot's license? But your pop showed me the way. I can join the Air Force. The Air Force? Well, what else? I'll enlist and put in for Air Cadet. They'll teach me how to fly. It's that simple. And while I'm in, I can even qualify for a commercial license. It won't cost a cent. Cost? I'll even be paid. The Air Force? Now, what do you think, Margaret? Well, gee, I, I don't know. <sighs> I hadn't looked at it that way. Well, you haven't told me what you think. Well, Eddie, do you want to enlist in the Air Force? Oh, Margaret, I have to. Well, then it's all right. It's okay with me. Well, it's a start for us, Margaret. It's a step in the right direction. Come on. Let's go inside and dance. <laughs> Edward Benson became Airman Edward Benson. And then one day, orders came through. And once again, Edward Benson started school. A different kind of school. And he had another title. He was designated as an aviation cadet. It was an exciting school. And there were fellows here from all over the United States. Fellows who spoke with a variety of accents. There were drawls from the Deep South, slang from New York, broad A's from Boston, and tall stories from Texas. And Eddie found he was a part of the greatest group of guys he had ever met. The routine, well, it was tough. You have to be on the top mentally as well as physically to fly an Air Force ship. But Eddie loved every minute of classes and training and study. Not bad, Benson. Oh, thank you, sir. I'll say one thing, you know your instruments. Have your headphones checked off. Sir? Might have a loose connection somewhere. For about a minute up there, you weren't following my instructions. Probably didn't hear them. I'll turn them in now, Lieutenant Carter. How was it, Eddie? Shooting fish in a barrel. Did you get... I mean, w w were you nervous? Nah. No. Boy, I'm scared. Of well, what? Nothing happens that we didn't learn in pre-flight. Yeah. Uh, how's the lieutenant? You'll find out. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, Joe, he's great. He makes you feel easy and relaxed. Yeah, I bet he does. You look like a ghost. Hey, what's the matter, kid? You sick or something? I don't know. Maybe I was kind of excited. Or it must have been something I ate. Yeah, it must have been with a chow hound like you. Okay. Uh-oh. That's me. There's nothing to worry about, yeah, Joe. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, will you be at the PX? No, I'll see you in the room. I want to crack that book on aerodynamics again. Boy, you are a student. Well, <clears throat> here goes nothing. Hey, boy! Come on, come on, wake up. Uh, Chow time. Uh, uh, oh. Ooh, what time is it? Am I wise to you? Gonna crack a book, huh? You came here to grab a little sack time. I don't know. I felt kind of funny. You did? Yeah, I just fell asleep. Hey, kid, you don't look too good to me. I think you ought to see the medics. Are you nuts? Come on, watch for Chow.
Ted has a 21-inch screen, Mrs. Jones. Uh, tell me, Margaret, do you ever hear from that Benson boy? Oh, yes. We're engaged. Oh, I understand he joined the... Whatever did he join? He's an aviation cadet in the Air Force. How nice. Hmm. Of course, the antenna's built in, so you don't have to bother with anything on the roof. Another good feature... Does he write you? Mm -hmm, every day. Does he like it in the Air Force? Oh, he's very busy. He just finished pre-flight. Now he's taking primary training. And then he'd be taking basic. Yes. Oh, just think. Little Eddie Benson, a flyer. <laughs> well, I used to give him a quarter to mow the lawn. Oh, can I show you the combination model? Oh, I'm just shopping around. I'll be back. Give my regards to Eddie. Mm, bye. The toughest part of it all is to say goodbye to the fellows you've gotten, gotten to like. like. Every, Every now, now and then, a guy gets eliminated. eliminated. Oh, there's lots of reasons. It's tough here. You gotta be on the ball. You gotta listen all the time and learn and study. It's not easy, but, honey, is it worth it? Now, there'll be times when you won't be able to see. You'll have to learn to place complete and absolute reliance on your instruments. Your response has to be automatic. Excuse me, Benson, I know I'm not a great orator. I'm not a comedy star either, but I didn't think I was dull enough to put anybody to sleep. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Now, understand. One day, your life is going to depend on the lessons you learn here. More than just your life, maybe your buddies' lives also. Maybe a mission that'll involve a thousand lives. Uh, excuse me, sir, but Benson hasn't been feeling well. I think he's got the flu. Shut up. Report to the flight surgeon, Benson. Sir, it's a little hot in here, and I... I... That's an order. Major Gordon. Major Gordon, Lieutenant Carter. How's the medic business? Slow, but who cares? Well, I might have had a boy with the flu. I'm interested in knowing. Flu? A cadet named Edward Benson. No flu turned up today. Neither did anyone named Edward Benson. He didn't? Nope. Well, thanks, Major. <laughs> hey, Joe, you want a soda? Hey, what'd the flight surgeon say? I don't know. I didn't go. You didn't go. That's right. But Lieutenant Carter told well, what you... What was I going to go for? I feel fine. Uh-oh. I see a guy heading our way. Who? Don't look now, but here comes Lieutenant Carter. Hey, Benson. Thought I told you to report to the flight surgeon. Well, I would have, sir, but I feel okay. That's not for you to decide. Ah, uh, sir, they take one look at me and say, this guy's okay. What's he trying to do, be deformation? Besides, sir, we had mathematics this morning, and I can't afford to miss any of that. But you felt sick yesterday. Well, sir, you know, there's all this virus running around. It comes and goes. Once you feel better, what do you need the medics for? Now, well, okay, best. Swell guy, isn't he? Yeah, the best. How about a little softball? The guys wanted to get up a game. Okay, count me in. You're up! I've been able to hit this guy all day. All right, get a hold of one, Eddie. Come on, slam it a mile. Hey, uh, take the charge. Tag it, Eddie boy. Yeah, right. Hey, that was a good foot off the plate, hump. Uh, get him some glasses. How do you ever get in the Air Force? Uh, it just takes one to do it, Eddie. Save me a lick, Eddie. Oh, and uh, run, Eddie. Right, take two. Eddie. You can come all the way. Come, come on, boy. come on in. Slide, Eddie, slide. Hey. Hey. That's my boy, Eddie. <laughs> What's the matter, Eddie? Can't you get up? Hey, Eddie. Eddie, you hurt your leg? No. What's the matter with him? Eddie. Hey, get the medics. Say, nurse. Say, what's wrong with me? How do you feel? Oh, great. I mean, I, mean, I feel okay. I must have been running too hard in the hot sun. Now, can I get out of here? Oh. Sure. Well, when? Hey, Lieutenant. I see he's awake. You Major Gordon? Yes. That'll be all, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Tell me how you feel now, Benson. 
Oh, sir, I'm okay. I can't miss any more classes. I have to get back to the outfit. Can I get out of here in the morning? No, Benson. Afraid not. But why not? Benson, I have the worst job in the Air Force. I, I don't understand, sir. Had any pains in your bones, your joints lately? All right now? Yes, sir, I'm afraid I do. Mm. Yeah. That only confirms the diagnosis. Oh, but, sir, I'm okay now. I don't see what that happened. Benson, you have rheumatic fever. What? It'll go away, maybe forever. And you'll be able to stay in the Air Force. Oh, Major, never do a thing like that to me again. I was afraid you were going to say I couldn't be a flyer. I said you'd be able to stay in the Air Force. I'm afraid you won't be able to be a pilot. Oh, no, sir. Benson, I could have broken it gently. I could have stalled you and built up false hopes. But well, that wouldn't have been right or fair. But I'm okay. I know I'm all right. Ask my instructors. Ask my CEO. I'm leading the class. Call Lieutenant Carter. Ask him. I said I had the worst job in the Air Force. Look, Doctor, I have to fly. Ever since I was a kid, I never wanted anything else. You can't take it away from me. We won't take the Air Force away from you, sir. There are other jobs. Ah, uh, sure. Second fiddle. You can't have an orchestra without second fiddles. They're just as important as anyone else. Now, look, Benson, I know it's tough. All my life, I wanted to be a doctor. I worked for it and I studied for it. I know how I'd feel if they took it away from me. Oh, no, you don't, because nobody ever did. You can find something else in the Air Force that's just as good. Major Gordon, you just told me I can't be a pilot. Do you have anything else to tell me? Well, uh, if you don't mind, I guess I want to be alone for a while. <laughs> You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, Second Fiddle. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. This is an age of specialization, when the young man with good training is in great demand. He's a man who commands respect and good pay wherever he goes. And he's a man who's moving forward with the times, toward leadership and success in his chosen field. Yes, training is the keynote to success. The young men in the United States Air Force are getting the world's finest specialist training, in the most modern technical schools. They're becoming experts in such fields as communications, photography, aviation medicine, and a host of others. There are literally hundreds of jobs open to ambitious young men in today's Air Force. If you're a young man of military age and expect to serve a tour of duty in the near future, we suggest you investigate the exciting and rewarding opportunities awaiting you as an airman in the Air Force. Remember, it's the young man with the training who gets ahead in this age of specialization. And you can get that training in the United States Air Force. Visit your Air Force recruiting station and talk it over with the friendly people there. You'll be pleasantly surprised. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Second Fiddle. All his life, Edward Benson wanted to be a flyer. And so to make his dreams come true, he enlisted in the Air Force and became an aviation cadet. He was top man at his class until this illness hit him, which made it impossible for him to become a pilot. And therefore, Edward Benson was eliminated from school and assigned to duty at another base. Now his orders have come through, and Eddie is packing his bag. You need a hand, Eddie? No. No. I wish I could do something. Ah, oh, nobody can do anything. I hear you're going to Mitchell Field. Hey, boy, that's right outside of New York, my old hometown. I can give you a couple of phone numbers. <laughs> I forget you're engaged. Lucky boy. What day would have me, huh? Eddie, how about coming over to the PX? The guys are all there. They'd like to say goodbye. We, we won't see you when you take off in the morning. I'd, I'd rather not. Sure. Well, I guess they'll understand. I guess they won't. One day they'll be something I'll never be. They'll be pilots. You want to go for a walk, Eddie? Yeah. If you don't mind, I'd like to go for a walk by myself. Hi, Benson. Huh? Oh, Major Gordon. What are you doing out here? Well, I just thought I'd like to take a look at the flight line. Mm. Come out here quite often at night myself. Look at them lined up. Pretty, huh? Yeah. 
T-33s. I was going to start flying them next week in basic. Well, I'll never get up in the air anymore. There's second fiddle players in every orchestra, Eddie. Important guys, too. Yeah, I'll bet. How badly do you want to fly, Eddie? I want it more than anything in the world. Well, suppose you could have it, Eddie. <sighs> Don't kid me, Major. I'm just trying to get used to the idea of selling TV sets when my enlistment's up. I hear you're assigned to Mitchell. I guess I'll live through it. I'll work on the engines and the other guys will fly them. Well, as my mother always said, time passes. It'll be over before I know it. If you're a member of an air crew, gunner, flight engineer, you also fly. I'm a sick boy, remember? Not that sick. If there's no relapse in six months and you can pass the physical, you could qualify for flight crew, as far as the medics are concerned. No, thanks. I'm not having any. I'm not building myself up for another letdown. Eddie, you're looking at these ships the way a mother looks at her kids. I know you. You've got to fly. You're going to fly. Okay. Maybe not the way you dreamed about, but you're going to fly. Want to bet? Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet. I'll bet you a, an ice cream soda. You lose, Major. I'm not going to leave myself open again. I'm not taking any more physicals. Eddie, I still say, want to bet? Hey, that did it? Yeah. Hey, you know, kid, you're a natural with an answer. Just luck. Hey, I hear you getting out. That's right. You, uh, you thought about it? I mean, you could do all right for yourself around here. To me, the Air Force is flying. If I can't fly, who needs it? Flying? Uh, what's so hot about flying? I mean, it's that's all right, but that's not what made me join. I look for other things. Yeah? Yeah. Good job. You go up in grades, you go up in pay. Yeah, I learned a trade in this outfit. Uh-huh. I was just talking it over with the wife. You know, if I put in 20 years, I'll still be a young guy if I want to get out, and there's, there's the pension I'll get. You know, Eddie, you got to think of these things. Hey, is there a Sergeant Benson here? That's me, sir. I'm Lieutenant Miller from the medical detachment. like to talk to you, Benson. Yes, sir. Shut her off, Jack. Okay. Oh. I uh, got a letter from a friend of mine. I think you know him. Major Gordon. Yeah, I met him. Now, the Major wrote me about you... You know, it's six months since you were discharged from the hospital. You're eligible for another exam. It's six months a week and two days. Uh, the Major was afraid you might forget. He asked me to remind you. Thank you, sir. Will I be seeing you for the exam? No, sir. Mind if I ask why not? I'm in no mood to fail again. You can't fail unless you try. I'm not interested, sir. Yeah. Well, you know where to find me. Hey, Eddie, what do you want? Come on, let's take another look at that carburetor. Eddie. Hey, Eddie. What do you want? Roll out of that sack and get over the PX on the double. What for? You've got a visitor over the PX. Oh, yeah? Who? Why don't you go over and find out? Eddie, you hardly ever write. When you do, I hardly ever understand what you're talking about. So I, It's I... all right, honey. When I get out, I'll take the job with your old man and we'll get married and everything's going to be okay. No, Eddie. It won't be all right. If you can't fly, you'll never be all right. I got a letter from Joe. Remember him? He's got his nerve writing to my girl. Oh, stop it, Eddie. He says that you could take the exam for flight crew if you want it. I can't pass it. Did you try? No. But then how do you know? If you want to know, I'm scared stiff. If I failed, I think I'd die. Okay, let's forget it. Sure. What do they want from me? Do you think I could pass the exam? Yes, I think so. Well, I can't. Let's forget it. Attention. What? This news bulletin has just come in over the wire. Units of the United States Armed Forces have just been ordered to Korea to stop communist aggression. That's all we have on it now. There'll be more as soon as it comes in. Eddie! Did you hear that? Eddie, will there be a war? I don't know, but it'll be something. I wonder if Joe and the rest of the gang are going to be sent. Margaret, what am I going to do? 
You'll do what they tell you, I guess. Bombers, they'll need more crews. Look, if I could only get on a crew, it's just as good after all you're up there. What are you talking about, Eddie? I've been in this thing almost two years. They spent a lot of time and money on me. I can't be a kid about this. Hey, Jack, Jack, come over here, huh? Hey, what's the matter, Eddie? Margaret, this is Jack, swell guy. Hey, hey, Jack, sit here. Tell Margaret the story of your life. Honey, wait here. But where are you going? There's a guy I have to see. <laughs> Eddie, now listen here. I have to take pressure, blood tests. Now, don't crowd me, Eddie. Yes, sir. Uh, when am I going to... Eddie, will you sit down and relax? Eddie, I give you my word of honor as an officer, as a doctor. I'm going to run this thing through just as soon as possible. Uh, yes, sir, but when am I going to... Higgins, will you shove a thermometer in this guy's mouth? Sir, uh, this is my fiancée, Miss Margaret Smith. Eddie told me the news. Isn't it wonderful? Well, a little birdie told me they're going to cut orders on you to go to aircraft and engineer school. Thanks to you, sir. No, thanks to me, nothing. You passed the exam because you're physically qualified. I just wrote down what I saw. Uh, uh, Margaret's uh, mom and dad will be in New York this afternoon for the wedding, and I, uh, I, I need a best man, and, sir, nobody's been a better man to me than you. I'd be glad to, Eddie. It's funny, huh? I had a wild kid idea I wanted to be a pilot. I didn't realize he's only part of a great team. As the Major said, you're just as important to the orchestra if you play second fiddle. Oh, talking about Major Gordon, you lost a bet. Yeah, that's right, I did. Uh, uh, Lieutenant Miller, how do I send a guy a thousand miles from here an ice cream soda? <laughs> Today, the men of your Air Force are soaring to new heights as they blaze a trail of air progress across the skies. And now is the time for you to join them and become an airman with a highly specialized career. As a member of this aerial defense team, you'll be entering a whole new world, a world of the future that offers free training in such fascinating fields as guided missiles, photography, radar, and a host of others. You'll wear the handsome blue Air Force uniform a uniform that gains respect and admiration wherever you go. So for a wonderful future, with good pay, liberal allowances, and truly one of the world's finest careers, become an airman in the United States Air Force. Talk it over with the friendly people at your local Air Force recruiting station. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Dick Hartley speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>